what's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are continuing the season preview series as we are taking a look up north of the border in Canada at the Calgary Flames. So the Calgary Flames are an interesting team to say the least and if you guys haven't checked my latest live stream we did a QA, and a and you know, shout out to PJ a big Flames fan. Um, you know, we were kind of talking about the Flames and like where is the direction of this team because two years ago you know, The Flames looked like a pretty decent team with a lot of upside But a lot has changed in two years in Calgary, right? They've traded out Kachuk, Goudreau, and they've brought in Nazem Kadri, Jonathan Huberto, Mackenzie Weger, and You know last season, I gotta be honest with you I think a lot of it was Daryl Sutter and the fact he's no longer there. I think already is an addition by subtraction and you look at the new staff there, there's a new GM, a new head coach. Craig Conroy comes in as the new GM. Ryan Huska is the new head coach. I'm a little bit more on the fence about that one. But the fact that Daryl Sutter isn't there, I think is just a win. Now, who had a bad season last year? You could go up and down the list. Huberto, Kadri, Weger, Markstrom. Some of their big additions didn't do well. And I think that you look at this season... It's not necessarily that different of a roster. You know, really the only real noticeable guys, which we're going to get to in a minute, some of the changes here were Yegor Sharangovich and Jordan Osterley. That's about it. Now, Sharangovich is still fairly young. He's 25 years old. He's a forward, been with the Devils. You know, if that's a guy that can pot you between 20 to 30 goals next season, that's really good. And that's a guy that could really almost instantly replace Toffoli plus some of the other assets you got in that deal. And I'd be okay with that, right? You know, it's don't set unrealistic expectations for any of these guys. It's really more so about the younger guys that are coming in up front. And that's, you know, the rookies we're looking at here are Jakob Pelche and Matt Coronado. Now, Jakob Pelche, um, some of you will argue, isn't a, isn't a rookie. He played 24 games. So you could make the argument that he's a rookie or not. But a full 82-game season this year is to be expected for Pelletier. And I would expect the same for Matt Coronado. Now, Matt Coronado is a first-round pick back in 2021 of the Flames. And he literally played one game. So to say he's a NHL regular that's not considered a rookie is stupid he's a rookie so both these guys will be coming in and that's the expectations that's what everyone's focus is on next season and rightfully so because those are the guys that really that's the only real difference between this team and last year's team i would expect weaker to be better huberto Kadri, and markstrom all those guys had terrible seasons last year and did not gel and vibe with daryl sutter Instantly, I think they're going to be a better team just by those guys just being back to their normal numbers without even having like some sort of like renaissance season where they just go off and have incredible seasons. I'm talking about just back to the status quo of an average season for those guys would instantly be better for them. Also, the emergence of Matt Coronado. That's my breakout player. Matt Coronado is that guy. And, you know, you look through this team and, you know, a lot of these guys are already either proven veterans that had down seasons last year and are expected to be better, or guys like a Matt Coronado that I think are you know kind of on the radar as a young guy that could really break out next season. And that's kind of what I'm thinking here. And that's the safe bet, I think. But you look through this roster, there isn't much else to really look at, right? And that's, you could say maybe Walker Dewar who played with Minnesota for a couple years, is maybe the other guy. But other than that, you know, this is this is the guy I'm looking at, and that's Coronado. And is this the right Walker Dewar? No, it's not. Okay, never mind. So he didn't play with Minnesota. He played with Minnesota State, but not the Minnesota Wild. Um, yeah, so if I'm looking at this team, it's Matt Coronado and everybody else just going back to a normal season. Um, you know, Michael Backlund should be the captain of this team by opening night. I don't know why they haven't announced it yet, but I think that's what's going to end up happening. Um, you've got some veterans on this team, you know, to push you through the hard times. And if some of those guys with skill can get a little bit back to their normal um, level of play, this is going to be a, a better team. And considering where they finished last year, they just missed the playoffs last year. 
and they were that terrible. If they're anywhere near where we think they're capable of as like an even average level team, the Calgary Flames should be a playoff team in my opinion. And I think if they're anywhere um, near that level, but I just don't see it in the sense that losing to Foley for Coronado isn't necessarily an addition in my opinion. Um, like I said, you know, Sharon Govich is questionable. Is Elias Lindholm going to be on this team opening night? So it's hard for me to say by the end of the season that they will still be in the conversation of a playoff team. And the direction they went, bringing in Conroy, bringing in a young coach, I think they're going to go toward the transition route and looking toward the future. And with that said, I do think it's going to be a bottom out season for Calgary in the worst way. So I think some of their higher end guys will be better, but even with that, the lack of depth on this team does make me think they are going to finish somewhere between 30 to 35 wins with around 80 to 85 points. And that's kind of my prediction. I think they're going to be similar to where they were last year, just missing the playoffs and just on the outside looking in, but they will miss the playoffs this season. 35, 30 to 35 wins with 80 to 85 points. And that's it for the Calgary Flames. So it's kind of a short one here because there isn't much to talk about for Calgary. It's really the Pelletier and Coronado show. And if we maybe see some of the other guys come out of the lineup, maybe make the team out of camp like Cole Schwint or Connor Zari up front, or even a guy like Soyov or Kuznetsov or Poye on the back end. Other than that, you know, you've got Dustin Wolf to me, Dustin Wolf to maybe look at. But this team is just I want to be more confident in this team, but I just don't see it. You know, everything has to go perfectly for this team and then some. So that is my prediction for the Calgary Flames. What do you guys think down below? Do you think they'll be better next season? Do you think they'll be the same? Do you think they'll be worse and maybe completely bottom out? I want to know your guys' thoughts. Guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time.